Welcome back, guys. I've been waiting for this. You've been waiting for this. We're finally here. I won't drag this on with some long intro. You read the title right. I'm putting a Honda engine in the Ferrari. So I'm sure tons of you guys are stoked to see this and thrilled to ride this out, but probably just as many are groaning and upset beyond belief, wondering what on earth I'm doing here. But that's kind of half the fun, I'm not gonna lie. And this build's not gonna get any less controversial as we go forth, so this is your warning. If you don't like this, bail out now. But if you do, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, that kind of stuff really helps me as a content creator, and I really appreciate those of you that do. With that out of the way, let's talk engines. Some of you guys guessed this from the get-go, which really isn't all that surprising, especially once Amir made an appearance. His NSX Time Attack race car sports a Turbo K20. So this is not far off base, and he's definitely been an inspiration for where we're going with this. I'm sure a ton of you guys though are wondering, why on earth are you putting a Honda engine in a Ferrari? This is insane. This is a terrible idea. Why would you do this? And I, and I get it. I, I understand some of you wanna see a, a, an engine with a prancing horse on it, or you wanna see a big displacement V8, or maybe an inline six, something from BMW. What's going on here? Before that though, let's talk about the original numbers from the original Ferrari F106 V8. So the F106 only sports 202 horsepower from the factory. I was wrong before when I said that it had 205. 202 horsepower and 179 pound-feet of torque from a 2.9 liter V8. A 2.9 liter V8 that weighs over 600 pounds. That is with the transaxle, but it doesn't include any engine accessories. And if we add those in, we're talking about over 850 pounds of drivetrain weight. It's absurd. It's completely ridiculous. Now, some of you guys have said, why don't you take this engine and build something powerful out of it? This is the basis for the 288 GTO engine. It's the basis for the F40 engine. It's the basis for a lot of Ferrari V8s that make a lot of power. Making that kind of power though costs a lot of money. I might have a Ferrari, but I don't have that kind of budget. It also brings into question reliability. I'm sure that reliability is possible with these engines, but I don't know anything about them. I don't know anybody that does. And I also, again, don't wanna spend the money that it will take to do it correctly. We're not here to do things, you know, half-assed or, or part way. I wanna build a really good car here, and I just don't think that this engine fits that bill very well. And the last part of that is because of cost. We've already established engines like this sell for over $10,000. And that budget alone will pay for an entire build on a K-Series engine. This thing, it's not sticking around. The K-Series though, let's talk about it for a minute. This thing is a K24A2 from an Acura TSX. It makes 205 horsepower compared to the Ferrari's 202, and it does so with half a liter less displacement. So it is smaller, physically and internally. Now, that power level is stock for stock, and we're gonna go way beyond that with the help of a turbocharger and water to air intercooling. That's gonna well over double our power figure while adding relatively minimal weight. And when we're talking about weight, this engine, given the fact that it does have an exhaust manifold, an intake manifold, all of the engine accessories, a power steering pump, and a complete wiring harness on it, none of which the Ferrari engine have on them at the moment, weighs only 309 pounds. If we add in a transaxle, that's maybe good for 80 pounds, 400 pounds on the nose, give or take. That's less than half of the drivetrain weight of the Ferrari lump. We're taking good steps here in the right direction. This thing makes sense, I promise. This is gonna be good. So let's also talk engine layout because that's really important too. The engine that came out of the Ferrari is set up in what's called a transverse orientation, which means that the crankshaft runs perpendicular to the direction of travel for the car. 
That's really common on front wheel drive vehicles. If you pop the hood on a Honda, you'll see that the engine sitting in the engine bay sideways in contrast to how it might look if you pop the hood on something like a Camaro. On rear wheel drive cars, the engine runs fore and aft, and that makes it easy to transmit power from the transmission to the back of the car. Most modern Ferraris are set up with a longitudinal fore and aft engine layout, but there are some old ones, such as this car, as well as some old Lamborghinis, and even the Acura NSX that are laid out like this. If you're connecting the dots, you're gonna realize why this engine swap's starting to make a lot of sense from a practicality standpoint. This car is laid out as though it's a front wheel drive car, but with the engine in the back. That is exactly what we're going to do. The engine and transmission package from the Acura TSX are going to drop in and fit into this car with minimal modifications needed. It's gonna minimize the amount of custom work that we're gonna to have to do and the custom parts that we're gonna to have to have built. And that's gonna keep this thing cheaper to operate and easier to maintain. If I break something out of the track, I'm gonna be able to find parts for it easier because a lot of the parts that are gonna make this car go down the road will in fact be Honda and Acura parts. Being able to fit the engine into this engine bay and not have to cut the entire back of the car to pieces and find something like a completely custom transaxle solution just to run a longitudinal engine is gonna be a great benefit. So it's another reason why I've chosen to go with the Honda K24. So that touches on reliability too. This K-Series platform is really well established. Millions of these engines have been built. Thousands upon thousands have been built in the aftermarket and the aftermarket for them is huge. Guys make gobs of power with these things and all of the information needed about them is readily accessible. It makes for a really good engine platform that I can use to build a lot of power and to do so reliably. I don't have any guesswork. People know how to accomplish very considerable power goals with these engines. And Honda really went out of their way to build these engines really well. There are guys that make well over a thousand horsepower out of these engines without a problem, and they do so reliably. So there's a really high ceiling to what we're gonna be able to do with this car with this engine. And we can do it for not a ton of money. The donor engine cost me just 700 bucks and the $10,000 or more that I can get out of the Ferrari engine will build the entirety of this engine in race trim. We'll be able to build something very respectable without a huge entry to do so. So from a logic perspective, is this swap starting to make a bit of sense? Because I really think that it does. This engine's gonna make way more power. It's gonna do so way more reliably, way more cost effectively, and it's gonna weigh half as much. It's also laid out correctly for this chassis. If this doesn't make sense at this point, I don't know what will, but it doesn't have to be just about logic either. Cars are supposed to be fun, that's vital. I wouldn't do any of this if I didn't love every second of it. And the last thing I'm gonna love is the fact that no matter how much sense this swap makes, it will still make some people unbelievably upset. They're going to fume at the very fact that there's a Honda powered Ferrari that can blow the doors off of their car. If that doesn't pump you guys up, I don't know what will. And if you're still upset at this point, it's time to bow out. But for those of you that are stoked to see a turbocharged Honda powered Ferrari race car get built, let's get into it. The very next step is to get the engine mounted in the engine bay and located fore and aft, side to side, and get the axles positioned correctly. We need to get engine mounts made. I'm gonna have to head up to a mirror shop and borrow a blown up transmission so we can get this thing mocked up. Hopefully in the next episode, we can get started on that and we're gonna walk through every step of it. I'm really excited to be putting this build together with you guys and have you guys involved in this. And if you guys are stoked so far, so am I. I will catch you guys next week. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for the support. This build is only gonna get crazier from here on out.